Another Bendy and the Ink Machine theory? You betcha! Hey you, Prodigy's Prod Charles here, and in this video I'll be sharing with you a Bendy and the Ink Machine theory. This one will explain why Boris the Wolf is back at the end of chapter 2. If you would like more horror game theories, remember to subscribe and tap that bell, as on top of the many theories I've already made, there will be more to come. And just before we begin, if you can't watch this video all the way through right now, remember to tap add to and select watch later to save your progress, or just do it for fun. Let's start with what we know. We know that the main character, Henry, was invited to the old cartoon studio, supposedly by Joey Drew. We also learned in chapter 1 that Joey Drew asked the workers at his cartoon studio to provide offerings to appease the gods. In chapter 2, we are introduced to the director of music at Joey Drew's studio, Sammy Lawrence. Sammy has a dark inky body and does not seem to be liked by 3D Bendy, and in chapter 1, we see Boris's lifeless corpse on an operating table. But he appears in front of Henry, just fine, at the end of chapter 2. Got all those facts? Now let's bring it all together. Before figuring out how Boris is alive, we first need to try to figure out what is happening in Joey Drew's cartoon studio. Let's start with the letter. Joey Drew invited Henry to the cartoon studio, but did not give a reason on the letter that he sent. The first audio tape that we get to hear in the game is by Wally Franks, the janitor at Joey Drew's cartoon studio. In this tape, Wally says that he has concerns about the ink machine and Joey's obsession with getting offerings to appease the gods. This suggests that Joey Drew is trying to make a higher power happy, but who? The events of the game so far seem to suggest that this would be Bendy. In Chapter 2, we are introduced to Sammy Lawrence, director of music at Joey Drew's cartoon studio. We hear him singing what sound like hymns, or holy songs, for Bendy. He roams around the studio and appears to have the ability to teleport to different areas, such as when we first see him move across the screen while singing one of his hymns, and also when he knocks out Henry at the end of chapter 2, when he should have been on the upper floor of the orchestra room. This behaviour seems to suggest that Sammy is preparing some kind of ritual around the studio, but for what? At the end of one tape at the beginning of chapter 2, after he finishes praying to Bendy, we hear Sammy saying, But love requires sacrifice. Can I get an amen? After which Sammy says, I said, can I get an amen? But this time, he says it in the same room that Henry is standing. This not only supports Sammy setting up the ritual, it tells us that Henry was actually lured into the lower levels of the studio to act as a sacrifice for Sammy's setup. And this could explain the moving bendy cutouts, the messages on the walls, and the light that flashes behind the door in chapter 1. Which, by the way, is actually accessible in the latest version, and shows a room with a radio in it that plays an instrumental of the Bendy and the Ink Machine song by Kyle Allen. Check out the full song in the card that pops up in the top right. This is further evidence that Sammy was probably in this room, and stalking us, as it has the music note symbol that we see all over the music department and in Sammy's office. So now that we know that Sammy Lawrence set up rituals and led Henry into the low levels of the studio, how does that tie in with Boris? Remember that just before trying to sacrifice Henry to Bendy, Sammy Lawrence says that he must have him notice me, Bendy Senpai. But more importantly, he states that he's trying to get a sacrifice for his Lord Bendy in order to free himself from his inky dark abyss of a body. He also says that it's in order to set us free. Who us is? I'm not sure. He may be referring to the other workers in the studio, or to himself turning back to normal and Henry being freed from his body, or in other words, Henry dying. But in either case, I suppose it would make sense. So, what does this mean? I think that Sammy Lawrence was trying to kill Henry in order to turn back to normal or to transfer his ink form to Henry and turn himself back to normal. Whatever rituals were being performed at the studio, I think Joey Drew had a part in causing more than one staff member to be affected by the process. Sammy was one of the unlucky ones. This may explain why Boris is back. If Joey set out to bring his cartoons to life by sacrificing his staff members, Boris might have been brought back to life through the ritual performed by Sammy at the end of chapter 2. Or this could be another Boris that we see that had been formed from one of the initial rituals. Remember that in one of Sammy's tapes, he says, These stupid cartoon songs don't write themselves, you know? Which shows that he is not passionate about the Bendy cartoons and he isn't even passionate about his job. When the ritual was performed, his body was probably corrupted by the ink magic, turning it into a sorry puddle of a prison. In fact, he is probably the one who harmed Boris in the first place, which further supports the resurrection side of this theory. What do you think? Since we have to collect six items altogether in order to perform Joey Drew's ritual, I think that Sammy Lawrence, Joey Drew, Wally Frank, Susie Campbell, and Norman Polk, as well as at least one other victim, each donated an item to the ink machine. Sammy donated a vinyl record, 
Joey donated his art book, and the other characters donated other items. Tell me which ones you think the others donated. As Sammy had such a poor connection to anything to do with Bendy, even to the point of maybe hating Bendy, at least before his body became Ninky Prison, Sammy's intentions corrupted Joey Drew's ritual and caused his body to become what we see it to be. This might also be the reason why he turns to worshipping Bendy. Sammy realizes the error in his ways and in order to get Bendy on his good side, tries to become a prophet for him. It may also explain why Bendy did not harm Henry in the first place. Henry had fond memories working at Joey Drew's cartoon studio and spent hours upon hours just drawing Bendy. Bendy definitely knew better. Now, which of the workers at the cartoon studio could have been turned into Boris? Whoever it was, they were probably passionate about the cartoon Bendy and Sheep Songs featuring Boris the Wolf. On the same note, I think Susie Campbell would have become Alice Angel. Just listen to what she says about Alice in her tape recording. This is the first character I've really felt a connection with. Lucky her that she didn't get the part of a talking chair at this studio. It looks like Susie and Alice may literally be going places in this game. On the same note, maybe Joey Drew really is Bendy. The reaction that took place for Joey Drew might have been similar to Sammy, except Joey Drew may have been able to cross the barrier further to be actually transformed into a cartoon. Remember to subscribe and tap that bell for more interesting horror game theories and secrets. If you love horror game theories, be sure to check the description for a link to all of the theories and secrets and prodigies. I really hope that these series help you to expand on how you think, so it can help you with how you go about your thinking in your daily lives. See ya! Prodigies, I realize that Bendy and the Ink Machine is only in its early stages, and many things will change from now until the final version. I only made this theory because many of the Prodigies wanted to hear my perspective on what's actually going on in the game to date, and future chapters could possibly change everything. How do we know how many people actually work at Joey Drew's cartoon studio? How will the other characters that we will inevitably meet affect the plot? We will just have to wait and see future chapters to find out. Remember to subscribe and tap that bell for more cool and interesting horror game theories.